Hey guys, quick hello from me. I just wanted to say that in the intro to this video, I say there's going to be six things I talk about. However, that's not true. There's only going to be four things in this video. Because the last two things I'm thinking of doing another video about when the game actually comes out. Which, if you're interested, that's going to be Mount Chiliad and the Alien, uh, Alien Area 69. Uh, I'm going to briefly mention both of them, but for our own topic, I'm going to wait till the actual new remaster trilogy comes out. Uh, that's all I want to say, enjoy the video. GTA San Andreas is one of the most influential games of all time. Everything from the story to the huge map and its insane variety of locations, including everything from three complex cities to eerie woodlands to a gigantic desert. Even almost 16 years later, we still look back at this map and are still amazed by the variety of unique locations. However, when you have a map this big with so many locations, you have to wonder what mysteries are hidden in between the cracks. As mentioned before, GTA San Andreas was one of the most influential games because of how amazing it was for its time. However, that's not the only reason. The way I see it, GTA San Andreas was one of the first games to get hundreds of urban legends and mysteries, some being plausible like people reportedly seeing everything from aliens to ghosts to Bigfoot himself, and other people saying you can find ghost lamps, Slender Man, and suicidal scud- okay what the f- However, the most ironic thing, even though GTA San Andreas was pretty much the game that made myths and legends cool in video games, there isn't actually any in it. Even though people would spend hours trying to find things, exploring around the desert, around the woodlands, they wouldn't find anything, and people that said they do found stuff, they're lying. Look at, look at the videos, I mean, what the fuck is this? However, even though 99% of the time, nothing would be found, the other 1% being that weird horny argument that was in my Epsilon video, it was still extremely fun searching around the more strange locations of the map, praying to maybe find something. While GTA San Andreas did not really have any true urban legends, a lot of the ideas were still there, and were incorporated into other Rockstar games. Today, out of excitement for the GTA 3D Remastered Trilogy, we are going to be looking at 6 GTA San Andreas myths that came true in other Rockstar games. Number 1. The Epsilon Program I wanted to talk about the Epsilon Program first because I made a whole video dedicated on them recently. Link in description. The Epsilon program are a parody of real life religion, quotation marks on religion, Scientology. In GTA San Andreas, we can hear on the radio the leader, Chris Formage, talk about the program and how no one is taking him seriously. The Epsilon program believe in mythical creatures called Kraf and Kiflong among a bunch of other weird shit, which we will get into later. Players believe this farm is a meetup point for them, because on some of the maps it's labelled as a cult location. However, when you come here nothing really happens, apart from at night time the windows turn blue. But I've always thought this is more of like a graphical error than an actual easter egg, because it's like a bit of a weird thing. Anyway, the more interesting thing about this, is this certain NPC that spawns around this area who mentions a lot of the phrases that the Epsilon program usually say. Look out, brother uncle. Are you looking for spiritual answers? Have you ever read the Epsilon tract? Can I interest you in some literature? No, bitch, I can't fucking read. However, that's about all from them in GTA San Andreas. 
In GTA 5, they make a much bigger appearance, with a whole website talking about them, and as Michael, you can actually join them. When in the end of the quest you get with them, you can either choose to screw them over or follow through by delivering the money. In these missions, the Epsilon program are sort of shown to be fake and just trying to exploit money out of people like Michael so Chris can get more money. And that's why most players would probably betray them. However, in Red Dead Redemption, we can meet a very strange NPC called Francis Sinclair who tells us to do a mission where we have to collect a bunch of rock carvings for him and basically in the end of the mission he somehow goes back in time and turns himself back into a child. This is one of the strangest quests in any Rockstar game however you're probably wondering how the programmer connected to this. Well, Francis Sinclair is wearing very similar colouring clothes to what the program wears he also has red hair and a mark across his face, which is what the program says makes you a descendant of Kraft. So, were the program right? Is this man really a descendant of Kraft? I don't know. It's a very complicated story and um, it doesn't really have a proper explanation, which is the interesting part about it, it leaves speculation. However, um, I made a video on this not longer, there'll be a link in the description. If you're interested, I recommend you watch it. Number 2. Bigfoot. We have all heard the legends about Bigfoot. A massive animal creature that still works kind of like a human that's known to hang around the woods. Well, there really isn't much to say about Bigfoot in GTA San Andreas. Apart from this weird little spot on the map which people say looks like a Bigfoot and people reportedly seeing him, which are clearly just mods. That is literally all there is of Bigfoot in GTA San Andreas. However, in Red Dead Redemption Under Nightmare, uh, there's actually a mission where we can hunt the final Sasquatch because we're told that they've been doing things like eating babies. However, when meeting this final Sasquatch, it turns out that they're a friendly vegetarian species which were completely hunted to extinction by the humans and we're given a choice we can either free the sasquatch from its eternal loneliness because all the humans wiped out his race or we can just let him go to be lonely very sad anyway that's not the last of sasquatches because in gta 5 there is a mission called Predator. After Michael and Trevor have fleet to Sandy Shores to lay low, they have to defeat the three O'Neill brothers. After they're run off into the road and chased by Franklin and Chop, Michael is tasked to try and snipe them all with this thermal sniper. However, when looking around the forest, you can see for only a few seconds what looks like Bigfoot before it mysteriously disappears. But that is not the end of Bigfoot in GTA 5. Because, once getting 100% completion as Franklin, you can meet the hunter. The same hunter we actually see in Red Dead Redemption 1, who wants us to hunt Bigfoot. And at first it seems like bullshit, then we actually see him. And after capturing him, we find out it is actually bullshit. It's not Bigfoot, it's a person dressed up as Bigfoot. So that kind of sucks. However, again, that is not the end of Bigfoot. Because... Still, when getting 100% completion, you can find a certain peyote plant on the map. And when you do this peyote plant, you turn into Bigfoot. And that's not even the end, because when you turn into Bigfoot, you go to a certain place and you can fight a werewolf. I really feel like um, Rockstar tried to uh, definitely pay up for all the um, GTA San Andreas mysteries that wasn't true. Number 3. Ghosts. In Bone County, a strange derelict town can be seen. There are no NPCs in this town, and the town gives a very eerie vibe. We don't know anything about this town, we don't know why it's deserted, or how long it's been deserted for. Only thing we know is, is that it's a strange town with absolutely nothing here. Players have said they've seen ghosts and stuff, but 
looking at all the videos, again, as a very common theme you'll find in this game, it's all very bullshit. There's not any ghosts you can actually find here. Players have also reported seeing a ghost in CJ's house, the ghost of Beverly Johnson, CJ's mother. However, as a very common theme you'll notice, this is all bullshit, there's no actual evidence, the only things we do see are mods or very bad photoshops. Now, in GTA 5 we can find a ghost, and this is a very interesting one. I'm not going to talk about it too much because, one, I don't want this video to be too long, and second, I'm thinking of doing a video soon where I talk about this ghost and another ghost. However, this ghost in GTA 5 is the ghost of Lenora Johnson. There's a whole website dedicated to her murder in the game to try and find out who did it. However, I think there's evidence to say who the true suspect was. When finding Lenora Johnson's ghost on Mount Gorda around the ages of I believe 12 to 3am, you will see her. If you get too close to her, she will disappear, but she will leave one thing. The word Jock written in blood. Now, this has to be a reference to Jock Cramley, who is one of the people running for president in GTA, and more importantly, one of the prime suspects for her murder. And secondly, in Red Dead Redemption, we have the ghost of Angus Dowd. Again, she has a very long and sort of complicated story, and at some point in the future, I'm thinking of doing a video where I compare the, both the ghosts in GTA and Red Dead. So if you want to see that, please let me know, but that's all I'm really going to mention for ghosts. Um, but yeah, next part. Yeah, sorry guys, I'm not sure what happened there, but for some reason, uh, the pitch of her wasn't showing up, it's showing up um, now obviously. But um, it wasn't letting me go back and put it when I was talking about it, which was uh, weird, but here she is. And lastly, number four, a serial killer. In Bone County, a mass grave can be found with six bodies. There are tons of suspects about who could be the person that put these bodies here. Each of these body bags um, are just completely solid objects, they don't bleed or anything, but it's obvious that there are bodies in there. Now, there are quite a few suspects, everyone from the Mafia in the game, to a mysterious NPC called Mr. Trenchcoat, at least that's what the community have called him, who says a lot of um, things to do with aliens. And speaking of aliens, if you look to the side, you will find Area 69, which is GTA San Andreas' version of Area 51. Now, we don't actually know who the serial killer is, we can speculate all day, but there isn't any actual evidence. In GTA 5, <coughs> sorry, and Red Dead Redemption, there are two serial killers, which I have both done videos on. One of them on this channel, which I'll link below, and one on my old channel, which I'll link below, but I'll get to that. So, we'll start with Red Dead. In Red Dead, we have Edmund Lowry, who is, um, his name is a reference to the serial killer from GTA 4. Edmund Lowry, you can find three extremely mutilated bodies around the map, and after pulling a map out of all of the bodies' mouths, we'll find him in his shack where he'll try and defeat us, or kill us, but then we'll end up taking him to the bounty station where he'll end up trying to kill the sheriff and get shot himself. And then we have the Infinite 8 Killer. Now, I have done a video on the Infinite 8 Killer too, but that was on my old channel, and if I have to admit, I don't think that video was very good. Um, it was my first time trying to do a video in that style, and I think I got all my points across, but it's just not a very interesting video. I mean, I'll leave a link out if you want to watch it, but yeah. Um, and the Infinite 8 Killer basically, interestingly enough, we never actually see him, but if you just look around, you can basically find out the entire story. There's um, the newspaper report, then there's his murder house with uh, all 8 written everywhere, and um, then there's the picture of the islands. And um, if you go to the prison where it says he was in the note from the beginning, it shows you that, and uh, yeah, then you can find the bodies underwater. But yeah, that is um, the serial killers, and that is the end of this video. This video, it's been very different to what I've usually done. It's more of like um, a countdown video, which I've um, never really done before. It's not usually my go-to, but I just wanted to talk about 
a few mysteries um, in GTA San Andreas that sort of came through in other games because I'm thinking of doing more in-depth videos on each of them um, but I thought I would do this just to make everyone a bit more familiar but yeah that's the end of this video um, hope you enjoyed it there will be more videos on maybe each of these uh, different things I spoke about when the trilogy comes out um, I was thinking about GTA 3 and Vice City, but there's a few reasons why I didn't do them. First of all, I don't actually own those games, and you can't even buy them right now since um, they've been taken off the store because the new ones are coming out. Second of all, I don't know much about them like I do with GTA San Andreas. And third of all, like, from what I have looked, they haven't really got, like, many big, like, urban legends like San Andreas does. Like, it's more just sort of, like... Yeah, there's a couple of Easter eggs here and there, but it's not like San Andreas where there's all these crazy, like, mysteries. Like, I heard someone saying, oh, in Vice City you can find Bigfoot, which obviously isn't true, it's fucking Vice City. But yeah, that is the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot for watching, you can expect more content soon. See you guys later. Bye.